Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install a cartridge into a DaVinci printer. Potentially, you got one of these uh, fine machines, either as a Christmas present to yourself or a present from someone else. And um, uh, one of the things we, we did in an earlier video is we showed some tips and tricks with the cartridge. Now we're going to show about putting the cartridge actually in the machine and how you go about doing that properly. Now, a uh, couple things that remember I mentioned from the previous one. Make sure you get the, the um, um, you know, understand the chip orientation and also the way that the, the cartridge goes into the printer. So the cartridge will go into the printer in this configuration for the one up, I'm uh, sorry, not the one up, uh, the 1.0 uh, version will go this way. Uh, I'll also show, uh, I won't show the insertion of the cartridges, but I'll show the cartridges in a duo and how they work in a duo as, as well as in the 1.0. So this is kind of, will, will be for both the 1.0 and du duo. So the other thing is you really don't want to be touching this. this. This is a bit static sensitive, so you do want to protect this chip. You notice I'm pointing to it, not touching it. So again, I think that's that's an important piece because again, most of the headaches uh, for this thing come from uh, that. So the other piece that you want to do is I showed in the last one um, having this uh, lock mechanism in. Uh, there we go. So, you know, again, you want to lock it when it's in storage. You want to unlock it when it's, it's not in storage. For the insertion into the machine, I suggest removing this because it'll fall out probably anyway when you go to put it in. And just set this aside and simply return it into the slot when, when you're done and, and lock it, you know, when you're storing it. So, um, in the last video, we removed the plug. So, if there was a plug there, that was this plug. We removed it from here. Take it out, throw it away. I didn't throw it away, so... I wanted to just just kind of remind everybody take that out unlock it remove this now you'll notice that the cartridge will be typically in this orientation in your hand so you need to flip it to this orientation to go into the 10 printer and also into the um, left side of the duo printer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you up top now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the camera, take it out of the tripod, and then we'll show you what what's up behind there. Okay, so we're now looking inside the uh, the one up printer. So you see the head. Here's the release arm for the the cog, and then back here is the uh, slot where the cartridge goes, and here's the retaining clip, which is very important. Hopefully, this is all focusing. So I'm going to take you over real quick next door and show you the duo. So this is the duo. So you notice it has the, the two heads. These green pieces are, these green levers are the cog release levers for inserting the, the plastic. And again, you see the cartridges uh, basically um, here and here. So extruders are one and two um, ordered this way. And uh, I put... Uh, I actually put this on here so I would remember it in orientation in the software. And again, what happens is the plastic feeds through these tubes, and we'll look at this on the one up. And you notice these clips are in place. What happens are these clips force the cartridges down and for the pins to make positive contact with uh, the printer. If you run into problems, double check that these are actually fully clipped in. You notice that these are locked in, these cartridges aren't moving because these, these printers will shake a bit. So Let's go back to the one up. So, first thing we do is we remove this clip. I'm just going to set it over here on this side for a minute. Uh, you'll notice this, this is blocked out. The Duo and the One O's use the same case and they just block this off. Um, it would be kind of nice if they would have maybe left this and you could have had a cartridge in standby, but it is what it is. So, again, we, we talked about the direction that this goes in. So, this slides down. Again, make sure it slides all the way down into the, the, the piece. Uh, this 1-0 catches a little bit. And then what you want to do is you want to take this clip and you want to put this in here. And you want it, you want it to clip. You see it, it's clipped on both sides and you heard it click. That's, that's what's critical. Now the next thing you want to do is take and feed this plastic through um, this piece. Now 
the uh, end of this plastic is a little bit chewed up. Uh, and notice I want to get this loop out of here, so I'm feeding this plastic in, and it might take a little bit to get past this loop. Now you can see how it's fed very nicely out of the top of this into this. So you don't want to have any loops or anything back here where it's going to catch, and hopefully this is all focusing. So very important that it goes up this smoothly. Second piece, and you probably also noticed this, I'm going to cut back to the duo real quick, how this the, the, the uh, filament goes underneath the uh, cable management system. Same thing here. But one of the things I am going to do, as in the other video, is I am going to just, uh, and this is harder to do with one hand, so um, I'm going to take these, these clippers and then basically at an angle nip off this, this end. And so I've got that. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. And then I'm going to feed this into the top, and hopefully this is all focusing, into the top of this. Now I don't like this a little bit, but uh, I'll, I'll deal with that in a second. So um, this is a little bit hard to do with one hand, but what you do is pull this, pull this back and then push the, the uh, uh, plastic in. So uh, I'm going to see if I can't just set the camera on the printer. It's going to... This is going to take two hands to do, so um, partial apologies if you're right inside the, the printer. Maybe maybe they get bird's eye view this way. So I pull it back, and you'll you'll feel a bit of pressure as it goes past the, the cog wheel. See how far I've moved it in. So watch. I'm going to pull it back out, and I'm going to push it back in. So it's gone quite a ways, and then you just simply release the lever. Now, one of the pieces I don't like is this loop here, so I've got a little bit extra material. I could have cut it off a little bit shorter, um, but what I'm going to do is make sure that this is gone after I run the load filament setting, because what's going to happen is it's going to heat this head up and it's going to push some of this out. So I'm going to put you back on the tripod here for a minute, uh, and then we're going to take a, we're going to tell it to extrude the filament, so it'll take a second to heat up. So let's go take a look at that. All right. So we're back at the home screen, so we pressed home, so we're at the home screen. We want to press OK for utilities. We want to press OK for change cartridge. And then you see we have load filament, and we want to click OK. So it'll load the filament. So now what's going to happen is the extruder is going to have to heat up, so we're going to have to go through a period of time. You can see the extruder heating up in temperature-wise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the camera, wait for it to heat up, and then I'm also going to readjust it so you can see what happens inside uh, when this all goes on. Okay, so the extruder's heated up. It's, uh, and if you can see over here, it's flowing filament out. Uh, you can see it falling into the tray. Um, and it's uh, actually coming out there pretty good. So that's that's a good thing. That's what you want it to do. And it will flow for um, not quite a minute. Actually, probably about 20, 30 seconds. It'll push out. And you want it to you want to let it push out a fair amount. Okay. So now it's finished pushing out. And then what I'm going to do is kind of raise the back up here so you can see what's on the screen. And then you see, all right, check filament out from nozzle. And then basically, if it didn't didn't work, then what we'd do is we would press this arrow for retry. And sometimes you may have to do that. That's okay. It depends on how far uh, out your filament is. But nine times out of ten, it's going to be fine. It's going to come out like that. So we just press OK. And we're now done. We can press the home. And again, your cartridge is now loaded in your machine. J just, a couple, just a couple quick points, though. As I've already mentioned, um, if you if you run into problems, one of the first things to do is unseat and reseat your cartridge. Make sure that that's making good contact with the printer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, these things do vibrate, shake back and forth as they do print, as that head gets thrown around, um, and, and it, they can come loose. And if they come loose, it thinks there's no cartridge in here, and, and then it'll stop printing or give you issues. So always check that it being the first thing. Uh, second, second point, always make sure that that clip is clipped in. Very critical, uh, so it is making good contact. Uh, number three, uh, I'd also suggest, as I did, clip off the ends. Uh, even on a new one, I would clip off maybe about three inches of the end because what happens is that end gets a little 
uh, broken up and that kind of stuff. Uh, number two, I would make sure that, again, you have a straight path in your, um, in your filament run. So I showed that loop. Basically, by running that, that, um, that, that run that I just did to push that out, it took that loop out of the back, as you might have recalled, that was back there. Uh, because you don't want anything that, that where that's going to kink the, the uh, filament. I've had that happen before. It really messes things up. And especially if you're doing an unattended print, this thing will just simply fight against itself. So that's probably another thing. Um, you know, it makes me a little bit nervous. I do do overnight prints sometimes, but I, I really try to avoid that. Uh, and then if I do, I before leaving it unattended, and I never let this thing run when I'm not home, and I have smoke detectors in the rooms that it's in. Because, again, if these things get jammed up, you're dealing with a flammable source, i.e. the plastic. You're dealing with a hot end that gets very hot. And if the thermistor, you know, runs away, obviously goes bad, I mean, this thing's just going to try to heat it up to infinity, and it's going to start a fire. So, uh, again, a lot of cautions with this. I also keep a fire extinguisher right next to both of these printers. And actually, I have two other fire extinguishers. So I have three fire extinguishers in the shop area that are, uh, uh, you know, multi-purpose rated for this in case, in case there's a problem. So, uh, uh, again, just a couple of cautionary tales. So, hopefully this helped. If it did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, greatly appreciate it. It helps us make more videos like this. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.